This election to me now is pretty simple. The Republican, the Democrats want it to be about personality, vibes, momentum, and Donald Trump's a bad guy. And the Republicans want it to be about policy differentials. Senator Lindsey Graham goes on Fox News and destroys Kamala Harris and her record as vice president. So in this video, we're gonna talk about it. Welcome to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we get this video out to more people just like you and me. Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina. He goes on Fox News and, um, you know, he keeps it real. He absolutely destroys Kamala Harris's record. He was very articulate in the way that he <laughs> made that point. And the reality is, uh, if you are a person who's supporting Trump um, or Republicans out there, um, this race is all about policy and that's how we want it to be because there are people who are in the middle that do not know who to vote for because they don't know where people stand. And so it's very important for them to compare Vice President Harris policies and President Trump's policies. And if they don't have that, you know, it's going to be a difficult choice for them to make come November. So before we get any deeper into that, let's play this first clip. So right now, Americans are stretched financially. They can't afford back to school supplies. 50% of parents just can't do it. Right. Can Kamala explain what's happening? People are looking at their 401ks like they just lost uh, a lot. Can she explain exactly what's going on at a level that makes people feel comfortable that she knows what she's talking about? Well, we'll never know until somebody asks her a question, will we? No. So what we've heard is just gibberish. You know, when she tried to explain inflation and why we may, we may be on the verge of a recession, she has no idea what she is talking about. But she was the last person in the room before President Biden decided to withdraw all of our forces from Afghanistan. She encouraged that decision. She should not ever be in a room again making an important decision. She opposed pre-invasion sanctions on Russia to deter the invasion Russia against Ukraine. Uh, she sat on the sidelines while some nut job called Israel genocidal country and said nothing back. She is the border czar. More people have been poisoned by fentanyl on her watch uh, than is the leading cause of death in America from 18 to 35 year old young people. Uh, enough fentanyl come across our border on her watch to kill everybody in the world. She doesn't know what the hell she's doing. She doesn't, and she's going to have to, one of these days, Senator, answer for it. <laughs> In my we're, lifetime. We're waiting. In my lifetime, we're, sti hope, yeah. we're still waiting. Absolutely, we're still waiting because people still don't know. And the reason why people still don't know is because all we have to go on is what she said four years ago. And a lot of the things that she said four years ago or throughout her time as vice president is not what the Democrats want on the front page of the news and definitely do not want CNN, ABC, MSNBC, all these propaganda news channels to be reporting on. So of course she's not going to want to go out there and do anything to trigger an upstorm in regards to where she stands because it could backfire on her too early. That's what we saw what happened with President Biden. He did that debate with President Trump way too early in the process. Now, I still believe the Democrats set that up on purpose to get him out of there, but I digress. So this brings me to the question that I have for you guys. Why do you think she does not actually want to go out there and truly answer questions? Because this is who she is. Let's take a look. I think that there can be no higher priority than what we have been clear is our highest priority, which is bringing down the costs and the prices as much as we possibly can. And we will stay focused on that. How long should Americans expect? How long should we be bracing for um, this really sort of um, historic inflation and some unprecedented gas prices? Sure. In terms of uh, the discussions that the President Johannes and I had, uh, they ranged in subject, including the issue of the Black Sea, and I'll let him explain in more detail as he would like. Uh, but we are, again, fully aware and apprised because we are in constant communication with the President, with his administration here, about the concerns that they have about the entire region and, frankly, the vulnerability 
All you have to do is look at the map. Was it wrong to consider inflation transitory? I mean, these price spikes seem like they're going to be with us for a while. We have to address the fact that we got to deal with the fact that folks are pay paying for gas, paying for groceries, and are, 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 are need solutions to it. So mm -hmm. let's talk about that. Short-term solution includes what we need to do around the supply chain, right? So we went to the ports of Los Angeles, Long Beach, Savannah, Georgia, and said, hey, guys, no more five days a week, eight hours a day, 24-7. Let's move the products because people need their product. They need what they need. We're dealing with it in terms of the long term, and that's about what we need to do to pass Build Back Better. It strengthens our economy. Bidenomics is working. All of this is part of our blueprint together for what America can be. This is Bidenomics a plan to invest in America and build a future in which all people can truly thrive. But while inflation is down and wages are up, prices are still too high. And I think that there are those who are unable to see what can be, um, but there are many more who are able to see what can be unburdened by what has been. Okay, I know. That was very painful. I, I apologize for putting you through that for the last two minutes. But it's very necessary because this needs to be pushed out to people that are kind of on the fence. So if you have friends or family, uh, people who uh, may not be into politics like that, but they plan to vote, or they've been complaining about the inflation and the economy, educate them. Send them that video because this is what the media wants them to vote for, okay? Someone like that, someone who can't even articulate a sentence with any type of substance, which is very embarrassing as a person who could potentially be the president of the United States. Now, there is some logic to this madness. There is a reason why her campaign does not want her to go out there. It isn't just because she can't answer a question, but it also happens to do with what Kevin O'Leary mentioned when he went on to Fox News. Let's take a look. This is what we found. Wall Street Journal going back to late July. A lot, a lot, a lot of things can change, right? But Trump had a clear advantage right now on who is best able to handle the economy by 12 points, 52 to 40. Fox Business headline, Kamala Harris's campaign website has no economic plans. We were just going through it again to the commercial break. It's, it's a bio about her, and it's a bio about her. There is no tab for issues. It's intentional. She has no intention of putting any policy out there until this convention's over. I, I'm a very fortunate guy because I'm an investor and I, for decades I've been syndicating debt primarily for real estate. Some of her closest advisors are people I work with in finance. And we're friends. So I called them up and say, hey, listen, you want to talk about policy here? And they said, listen, everything's working right now. We're going to strong arm the press on policy. We don't need to do anything. Wait, wait, wait. What's everything's working? The momentum's crazy. The press she's getting right now, she is sucking Oh, her campaign. Oxygen. The campaign. Okay. Not the campaign even. is working. Okay. And there's no reason to sit down with any journalist and talk policy right now because we're in the euphoric stage. They think they can raise up to $300 million before this camp, before, before this, this whole thing that's going to happen over the weekend is over. So... That's extraordinary amount of money. Then it's time to talk policy. Then it's time to go to the center. Then it's time to talk about border. All right, so are and they telling you where she stands? No. They're just saying, listen, we don't worry about this right now. We don't have a problem. No uh problem here, Houston. We're just raising dough. And you got to hand it to her. Okay, so you guys seen that. And uh, Kevin O'Leary is dead on. So I have three points for you guys straight up. Uh, point number one is that the campaign and who she has on the campaign team, they're, they're smart people. Let's let's give them credit, right? They're smart at what they are doing. They are purposely uh, controlling their weaknesses, right? It, it is a weakness for that campaign to have her go out right now and answer questions. Absolutely. She cannot do it. So good on them when, when it comes to that. Uh, point number two, it's just delaying the inevitable. So as soon as she does go out and starts answering questions about her record, about her policy stances... And um, she tries to sound like she's a moderate. Um, there's a lot of clips already on the Internet that will be used to fact check what she says and contradict what she says. And people in the middle, if they were to see that, they're going to say, well, I don't know, because you, you've been the vice president for 
you know, the last four years. Now, all of a sudden, you want to do things differently, which brings me to point number three. I think the biggest problem that she has on her hands is that she's already been in the White House for four years. What excuses can she come up with on why things have not improved? And she cannot say, I'm going to pin it on President Trump and his administration. We don't have jobs because of President Trump. The The problem at the border is because of President Trump. People are not that stupid, okay? <laughs> They're not that stupid, especially when we have the receipts to show that she was the deciding vote that approved the Inflation Reduction Act, which caused more inflation. So uh, again, I, I think she has more problems on her hands, uh, but right now she is in a season where everything is going her way, but it won't last very long because sooner or later, you have to remember guys, Right now, what are they waiting on? They're waiting for DNC to be completed, right? They still have to go through the whole dog and pony show, get on the stage, and she has to formally say, I accept the nomination. It still has to happen, okay? So bear with this madness in, in the meantime and just understand, after the DNC, if this is continuing to happen where she is not answering questions, yeah, then, then we got some problems on our hands uh, on both sides, really. Uh, and so my hope is that after the DNC, there will be an actual debate. Uh, Trump should absolutely debate her, uh, call her out, especially on her policies, uh, especially on her record. And if he can do that, matter of fact, he doesn't even have to go hard with it. Just if she gets tough, unbiased questions, I think it's going to be over for her. But that's my mindset. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about uh, the fact that her campaign is intentionally hiding her? They are intentionally making sure she doesn't answer any questions. Uh, they do not want anything that can come back to ruin their campaign right now. And what do you think about the fact that and what do you think about what Senator Lindsey Graham mentioned? Right. And uh, just the reality of how bad her policies are and how much they really have been Im impacting everyday Americans. So I want to hear what your answers are and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused and stay true. Peace. Peace.